morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. And we are back for another session in our journals. And also, we're going to start our book. So I'm going to get right to it because we're going to need this full hour to flush out our project. Week 20. We are at week 20. And so week 20 is going to be a continuation of this whole idea of... Um, literature and you know how how we have literary influences in our lives and a lot of the reason why I was focusing on this is because and I think I've said this before but just to you know say it again is a lot of times we want to put language with our art and a lot of times people who are right brain don't oftentimes think in terms of left brain a lot of writing and folks who are left brain because um, I've worked with a lot of writers, have a hard time necessarily bringing the right brain of, of, of visuals into their work, but they want to. So the idea of being able to join our written thoughts along with our visual expressions as a part of our art mythos, you know, our ability to tell stories and tell them visually, I thought it was really important for us to focus in on how we use our words and how we express ourselves through language because we're highly influenced by language and a lot of Western education has everything to do with language. So, you know, we did our literary influences. We've been having conversations with our younger selves, even in our travel um, destinations, we infused it with words, right? And a lot of times when you're doing travel journals, you are writing about the places you went, what you went and saw, some of the impressions you had, what you ate. So you're still inserting this language bit. So week 20 is poetry. So now that you've had time to really think about conversations you'd have with your younger self, and I just love that prompt. And I, I did it again with you guys this week, and I'm telling you, so much comes up. And every time I do this, I think about the fact that I feel though I'm thinking about it in terms of what I would tell my younger self, I'm definitely having a current conversation with myself. And it's amazing how those permissions seem to come up. So week 20, poetry... We're going to create a poem. <laughs> we are going to create a poem. Um, now, here again, nothing fancy. It doesn't have to rhyme. It doesn't have to be a haiku. It doesn't have to match any. There's no rules or regulations. You simply can just put things that maybe came up for you during conversations with your younger self. Maybe you started writing things and you just trying to think of it in terms of almost something that is like poetic you know what i mean and it can be this can be anything and if it turns out you can't think of anything that's coming up out of you um just sort of like just flowing out go and just select one of your favorite poems maybe it was a favorite poem you had when you were younger um i still think of some of the earliest po poems that i learned just how they still impress me today. So maybe it's a favorite poem. It doesn't matter. There's no rules and regulations. So don't sit there and start sweating like, oh my God, I got to write a poem, Robin. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> no, just grab one that means something to you. And journal about it this week. When you're doing your art, think about it. Have it printed out and put it in front of you so it's on your desk. Maybe it's... um tack to the wall, you know, so that you can read it and allow it to, you know, color your work and what you're thinking and any ideas and things that come up as a result of it. Just allow it to inspire you. And so a part of this thinking has been a fun, has been fundamental to my development and growth as an artist. I use poetry a lot as inspiration um, for my work. And it's what I hope to impart on our journey together in Art Mythos, which is defining, refining, and reaching our personal goals while having fun and going easy on ourselves. That's what this is all about, going easy on ourselves. No right, no wrong, no rules, you know, nothing that you have to do. And with me doing this series with you all and however I present my videos, there's nothing I have to do. There's no set way it should be done. We're done with that. Just chuck all the rules the only rule is just to have fun there are no mistakes this is just you and yourself you know you're just um joining in and this is your personal expression if no one ever sees it because 
you have your own personal reasons why not, it's okay. You've given yourself permission just to have a really good time. And without any, um, without any parameters, that's so important. And that was a big thing when I think back to one of the first conversations I had with my younger self. It was about no rules, Robin. <laughs> There's no rules and regulations. We're just going to have a good time. We're going to have fun and just, you know, just have wild abandon. That was a big thing for me because I came out of a very structured home. Both of my parents were um, in academia. They, um, it, you know, everything academic was so, you know, um, you know, uh, what's the word? It was very important, you know, in the family structure to do well in school, to have good grades, to go to college, to do this and do that, yeah, everything. So there was a lot of structure like that. And though it has served me, looking back on it, it's definitely served me. There are things I had to work out of it. I had to work out perfectionism. I had to work out, of, you know, worrying about rules and regulations. I had to work out of me the right way and a wrong way to do things. I had to work out criticism. Um... All that kind of stuff. So I didn't get to where I am without having done <laughs> some of this work. So poetry is a magical art form that aids in the introspection necessary to see life through a different lens. So let's pull out those rose colored glasses this week and have fun with this prompt. Yeah, just put, put a little bit of, put those pink shades on and decide that you're going to have a good time and you're going to see life through those lenses. So I'll do a quick flip like we always do. So this week over in Patreon, what we did is I just kept it simple because I wanted to be, I knew we were going to be working in these pages, but this is some of the printing that um, we did. And that's the, the flake, the flaky. And then of course I went and did the coloring like we did here. These pages I colored also, boy, I love how this stuff really colored. This was that off page that I was just wiping all of, you know, I was wiping my um, palette knife on, remember? And then I stained that. And I did this this way to just, over the, in Patreon we were just working at different ways to kind of create writing spots in your journal along with your art so that you can begin to integrate in the pages. And we can do some of this when we work in this book. Just thinking about ways to have the art, but have your writing spots. And just think if you, I did several pages like this, but you know, you don't have to do them back to back. You could do a journal where you did them back to back or, you know, like every so many pages, you have a page like this inserted or a page like that inserted in between pages that may look like these kind of pages, right? So that you know you're putting a writing spot in your book as you're moving through. My book is, it's like starting to separate here. That's a good thing. Um, so these are the pages. Very simply done, but just another way to think about writing spots and, you know, our art. So we are going to do something in here believe it or not i got a few ideas because i want you to still feel like you're going to do your your journaling but at the, and and so we'll revisit some of the ways maybe that we did things earlier um to continue to get our pages done while we work on this book structure so i'm gonna put this to the side right now let's and um we'll be down to the table with all of our goodies Okay, so we are back now. Sometimes I have to stop and get everything sort of organized, but we're good. So starting off, I've decided that this is going to be my cover for the book. I kind of contemplated a number of different things, but we're going to go with something very easy because I don't want it to be too much that um, it's kind of hard to finish the book. So it's going to be a very easy structure, but it's going to be a really impressive and a good looking book. So basically what I did is I just took a priority mailing box. It was one that I had gotten in and um, I was gonna throw it out. So I just cut it up. And the nice thing about it, it's, you know, by being already corrugated, you know, corrugated like this, it's easy for you to find your fold spots. So when I went to do my spine, I figured out, you know, it's about an inch. And then I was able just to kind of take 
bone fold or you can take anything and just kind of you know kind of run it in about where you want it and then it folds right down nicely <clears throat> I took some canvas cloth you know just art canvas or whatever you have you can use any fabric it doesn't have to be canvas and covered it just using some PVA I use uh, this art glue or any white glue and attach the cover so I kept it very simple I'm gonna do something inside I haven't decided what that's gonna be yet but you want to sort of get this book part going because you want to figure out what your size is gonna be now I like square books or I like longer journals I kind of like an odd page shape so this one is just you know if you want to do a similar size this one is about six by six and a half so that's about the size I'm working with so that means these pages are going to get torn down because see how much bigger they are you can tear them down you can also we could also fold some of them as we go through and make pockets so let's say if I wanted to do that um, do something like this and create a pocket so some pages you can tear some pages you can just and we blew them up so we're going to just go through now and start working on our pages but I wanted you to see what we're going to use it's going to be a very simple structure we will sew it but it's going to be very easy okay so what I've done is all of my pages are done on both sides so I took and some of them I used I took the different three different ones and um, you know created different writing spots on the back of them so and then some of them I ran through the printer to get them on the front like we did before so I'm gonna get rid of these right now these I'm gonna hold on to because those are gonna go in there and then we're gonna come back so we're gonna get our pages set up and then some of and then we're gonna start decorating some of the pages with some of the things that we already did so you'll want you guys will get an idea of where I'm going to be going with this and we're going to be working on this over the next couple of weeks so we're not going to get it all done in one or two sessions so don't worry about that I'm gonna get that out the way boy I was doing a Facebook live yesterday with um on I took over jelly arts Facebook group and we were just over there having a good time. The video is still up if you want to check it out. Um, Jelly Arts in, on Facebook. And um, you can see I was doing quite a bit. Okay, so let me put these to the side right now. I'm going to figure out. Let's just go ahead and work on the ones we already have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by folding them all in half. Let's just get them all folded. And then once they're folded, we can decide um, if we're, how many we're going to, you know, do pockets or not. But this one right here, for some reason, let me just rip this one off. When, I went, when it went through the printer, it kind of skipped before it started printing, so... Let me just get rid of that. Okay. Because I'm going to have to get rid of the white edge. But let me get my trash can. It's behind me a little ways. Um, so this page will be a little shorter. It doesn't matter. And you can also put different... Um, size folds. I'm going to fold it, these all just in half to keep it simple. I think sometimes that's best when you're trying to because we already have enough going on with this project between doing a project working in our journals 
But I just thought it'd be fun. Let's just keep it real life. That's what we do. Now this one I, this is one that I had wiped off the um, the texture paste, but then I ran it through the printer, and I kept it blank on the one side because I'm gonna use this to do collage. So some of the one-sided pieces are going to be. If I didn't print it on the second side, it's because I'm using them to, you know, um, well, I tell you, my, I, I just stopped even thinking about what I was saying. <laughs> it's because I'm going to be using them for collage and I don't need the second side printed. It went right on my mind, even what I was thinking. Like, what was I even just thinking? So I hope you guys had a great week. Lot go so many of you said how much you really love these printables. I'm glad because I know this is my palette. But I figure if you're hanging out with me, you have a similar love for earth tones. Doesn't mean we don't like brights. I did some beautiful papers yesterday that were using some of the brighter tones and they really came out nice. Oh. So now that I have them folded in half... And now we can change whatever direction. We'll get to that. But let's just get them all folded in half. And then let's just go ahead. Wait a minute. I don't have to do those many stages. Because I just need to figure out now. Um, how I'm going to do this. So let me look at these. I'm going to make a few of them. So let me just go ahead and put this in here and see. I'm going to use, I'm going to use this inside of the cardboard as a guide for how big I want my pages. And I did a little overage on the, um, the fabric just because I wanted it to have that extra sort of space around it you know um, and but if you make whatever your page is about this, the approximate width of the cardboard then um, it'll protect the you know your pages are protected that way so we can do this like this so one of these is going to let me see I'm going to fold one let's look at which ones would look good Fold it up. I think I'll do. Okay. So these I'm going to fold up. I just kind of went through randomly and decided which ones I thought were pretty cool to do that with in terms of a pattern that when I flipped it up I would get enough variation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just take it off, take get rid of that white top and bottom on these because this is going to be my top. Okay. Might as well get rid of this this edge as well. Okay. A little bit of white there. Okay. So with this one. going to just kind of I'm just eyeballing it I don't really find the need to have to over measure so it's going to be sort of loosey-goosey you know but if you're a measurer and I get it um, when I used to teach uh, book arts um, 
in university and at the Smithsonian, I'm telling you, I, I had, you know, all kinds of students. And I learned that everybody just has their thing, you know, and some people really, uh, let me just open this up. I should have, I want to get rid of this white edge. Um, no matter what I said, oh, you don't have to worry about it because I'm really not a measurer. Oh, no, I have to, you know. So do your thing. It's Like I said, it's no right or no wrong. If you feel the need to measure, that's just how your brain is going to function. You are not going to be happy if you don't measure it. So, so definitely measure it. Um, for those who don't feel like they like to measure, they're good at eyeballing, then have at it. Nothing wrong with that either. It's like... It's just like about back to what we've been talking about. Just giving your permit, yourself permission to create the way you create. That's that's all we're talking about. That looks good. See, I like squares. This is basically a pretty true square. Yay. Okay, that's perfect in there. So this one... This one right here, a little bit of the white stay behind, so let's get rid of that. Alrighty, so fold that up. See how we get a nice variation in pattern there against this. So that's perfect. So these are going to be like probably every few pages I'll put the pockets in as um, sections. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get these. I wanted to do this process with you. It's a little bit sort of laborious, but I figured you'd appreciate seeing the process done and you know you guys know how to stop the video grab all your stuff since you have your printables I'm sure you already have a lot of this ready to go and then I figured you could sit down and we could do it together and then that's a good way of getting the project done and you know we're working at the same pace so it's not so it doesn't so it's not like I'm skipping any steps you know like if this were a time lapse, lapse video where it's like, okay, all the pages are folded. I really don't think there's a whole lot of, you know, I don't know. I don't know how much you get out of that, especially if you really want to see the process. Some things get lost in a translation. Now, you know, with this process on these papers, we haven't done it. And I probably will do that this week in Patreon think I am we're going to do that this week is that after this part I'm going to go in and glaze all of these papers so they're going to all be glazed before I start the collage process that way it has that little bit of um and if, for those who want to see it in some of there I have earlier videos where I show glazing so if you just kind of even search on my channel and put the word glazing in you should find videos in which um, I'm showing you how that's done yeah this is good so no worries you'll find what is this okay that's my extra Sorry for the mess. I call myself trying to put a clean one. I mean, I did put a clean one down, and then I thought, oh, generally they last me a little longer than <laughs> one thing, but we got, we had a lot of fun, so. Things got a little messy. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that's this one. Boy, I tell you, get to this end. I try to put my pressure on it, but why is it sliding? I don't know. Okay. Alrighty, so let's just see how this one's going to go. I think I want this part turned up. Let me just see. Okay. There. So these are all the pages that are going to be our, I love this square. See, just make, don't, the pages just look completely different when they go square. Like to me, this is such a predictable size, right? But all of a sudden it becomes so interesting in this shape. And plus this book just feels good in the hand. This is going to be like a good feeling little book. Okay, so those are done. Now what we're going to do with these, it's going to be a little easier because I am simply going to let me just figure out the easiest. Oh, I know what I'll do. Kiss principle. This is one of the ways that I measure. So this is a good way to show you guys now. Um, let me see what if I'm going to tear this I got to get the angle right if I'm going to tear it I would be like doop, doop. okay so we're going to do it at this angle get my pencil make my line <laughs> I'm one of these people who measure if I'm a measure I kind of just go the easiest way possible. So that looks good. On this side, I want to kind of grab that and I want to grab this. So I want to sort of figure out what I'm tearing, you know, and what's going to stay. So that's why you want to look at your page and you can alter it depending on, see I'm using that and then I'm just taking it, lining it up. With my little ruler mark and I know I'll get them the same every every time you can make all the pages pockets if you want I think it may be a it might end up getting a little thick that way but you know do your thing whatever it is you want to do okay that's that's really good perfect so let's just do and let's save these pieces these are to be saved because we'll be using those That's my puppy. He has um, bronchial, some little bronchial stuff. I have him on um, homeopathic cough medicine, and it does him pretty good, but can be a little challenging, poor guy. just do it. I think it's sometimes easier if I do it this way because I can see and I'm eyeballing it to see that it's straight I can pretty much tell that it is so get this edge perfect and these will end up being different sizes because we are, um, you know, we're just tearing them at different places depending on what you want to see. So if I keep some of that, what am I losing over here? Okay, so let's just go ahead and grab this off here. You need to go out, buddy? You say yes. I need to go get some water. Let me get, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Go ahead. Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> you guys hear me doing my doggy voice. <laughs> He's answering me back. Yes, I need to go get some water, please. Thank you very much. Please and thank you. Okay, so let's put this here. Perfect. I like, I like. there let's see so maybe right here well I think I'll get let's start on this side because I can see what's here And then on this side, we'll just grab okay. A few more pages, a few more. And then we're going to go ahead and organize the book and I'm going to make two signatures. So we're going to do two signatures. Yeah. And I still want to add a couple of those. So once you get these main pages done you can also um feel free to add other pages in <clears throat> so if you're using the pack like me you can do these but i'm going to add some of these in like this page no that not that one that's the one we're going to be but remember we did these so this one has um and i wonder if I know I've stopped that one but I want to just see how this one flushes out oh good I can get I can get both of these I can get both of those um, stencils on there in the space of the book So you can take some of these pages we are working with and, um, you know, and add these in. So add, you know, <clears throat> as, add as many pages as you want and whatever you think will fit in your, your book. Okay, so let's just do this pretty much even. That's going to be good. Okay. And then here. Two more. really like this this circle down there so I'm going to just make sure I preserve that and then this will go here so that Okay. Now on the time there, I don't want my 
my camera to stop and I'm in the middle of uh, doing this and, and miss paying attention. This looks good. I like it. Okay. This is our last one of these pages. Okay, so I'm going to get this end. Kind of want to get that circle thing there. That came from a stamp that I have that I made. It's a rubber stamp. I made it a long time ago. I still use it. I love it. So when I was doing these jelly prints, I was using that rubber stamp as well. Alrighty, and then we're going to just do this last page here. I think I'm going to do this. And when we go and um, when we glaze these, that's also makes it the paper even I mean even though I'm using the really heavy weight of uh, the 28 pound it's still amazing how strong how strong it that you know that extra bit of acrylic paint will make our pages so it just makes them more durable as well okay all right so let's organize our pages as we have them right now. Okay, so where was that? So I think I want, so of my pockets, what do I want to be my first page? Decisions, decisions. Okay, so I think I want this one and this one will go. So these will go together. So let's, because I'm doing two signatures, so each of them is going to have two pockets in them. So let's just start just kind of going on the color scheme. Let me see one two three four okay so two and I'm just trying to make things sort of even kind of as I go so I'm just kind of going back and forth kind of you know eeny meeny just to get things that I want in a signature so let's start with that one let's do that and you know we can we can shift these around. Right now I'm just getting them going. Wait a minute. But they can be, you know, we can we're not sewing them right away, so doesn't matter. So I'm gonna put this in here. Okay. So that's like one signature, but they're going to actually, and you'll notice that they're going to get longer as they go. And then if that bothers you, we'll be able to trim this little edge up. So don't worry about it now. Um, generally, I don't mind, but like that one is coming out a little bit far, so I may end up trimming it. But you never know. See how it went inside once I actually opened up this gutter and push things in further so who knows we might not need it okay so let's assemble this one and then oh wait a minute where's that okay oh I had five didn't I righty well I'll just put this one in the middle 
that's fine. I thought I had four, but wait, let me just, maybe I'll change this one out. Okay, so let's start with this one. And then that one in, this one, this, I'll put that one in. Let's go with that. Wait a minute. Do it like that. Oops. I missed I missed that little white hanging out there. Let's get rid of it. Okay. And then this in there. And then that. Okay. So extras, no problem. Okay, so these would be our packs, our pages, and we're going to be putting them inside. Now, we're going to be adding more to these pages. So by the time, you can kind of see when you look in there now, it's a respectable amount for this width. But we're going to be adding a lot of, you know, we're going to be gluing stuff to the pages. So next, starting next week, we'll be working with, you know, some of the stuff that we did here. So I'll like, I'll find a spot for that. Maybe like right here would be cool, actually. I actually like that there. So... Let me just go ahead and I just like to, when I see places I think I want stuff, I'll just go ahead and tear it out. So next week we'll be prepared to do this part. So if you want to make more of these kind of papers, if you just want to make sure you have other bits and pieces, and it doesn't have to be this stuff, it can be, I'm sure I'll be using some of my um, antique, teak, antique, Asian papers. So these are ones that I make. I tea stain these, but you know I'll be adding some of this kind of stuff. So we're going to add things to them. So just make sure you have all little bits and bobs and stuff that you want to work with. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and collage the papers and kind of start the storyline, right? We'll make our pockets. And then we have the different spaces for writing. And you can also flip your pages. Like, let's say, if I don't want that one, I can take it and go this way with it. So some of them can be page to page. You know, like when we start actually really putting more of our artwork on there you might want to flip the pages so when you're working consider you know you know for yourself how you want to lay out your book I actually like that look and I like it to be unpredictable so that every single turn isn't necessarily um you know image to image type of thing Some of this would be nice in there and you know we'll be able to see through the bottom see through it okay so you got the idea so make sure you have those pictures and all your stuff that you want to collage with in place wow and i'm going to figure out how i'm going to cover what i'm going to cover inside with i may just use more of this canvas cloth or i may use some I have some dyed silks. This is a small piece of it, but I have, I may actually glue down some of the silks. I don't know. I'll keep you posted because we'll, we'll do the inside. And if you already know what you want to put on your inside, you can have at it. You can just put paper. If you don't have fabrics, you can use the same thing. Use paper. I think I would use some of the little adorable if you have some kind of um, fabric or... Okay, so 
we've gotten to a good point in our book. So like I said, next week we will be doing our collaging. So get your covers, figure out what you want to do, get your pages, figure out what size you want and kind of have things at this point so that then we can sort of work on our pages. Let me put this inside of here because I don't want to forget that I liked it there. Now what did I do? That's why you got to put them down when you see it because I wonder if I even changed it when I was, I think I had it there. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put this to the side and now we're going to finish up. We're going to do something in our journal. Got to do something in the journal. See, these pages are all good to be able to put inside. So you could do some of these techniques that I did here where I just put down some of that red graph paper and then I sprayed some of the um, Seth Apter licorice kind of across the bottom there. I really liked how that happened. So you can actually, I'm sure I'll do some of that to these pages, kind of distress them a little bit. And we can think in terms of maybe half the page with images, the other writing space. So we're going to do different things like that in here. But I was just kind of going back over some of the ideas. This was just a, a, just a plain piece of newsprint that went down there without any lines. And it just integrated nicely with the print. So yeah, just to give you guys food for thought. So I know you're figuring it. You're probably thinking, oh, your mind is probably racing like, you know, say a million miles a minute. Okay, so we're going to finish up by doing our, you know, got to do something on our pages here. Where is, let me just get right over here my, I have some tape right here just for gluing. <clears throat> so what's cool is you have these pieces that, of course, you can... You'll be able to use these back in your journal, but I'm, a, I'm in, you know, in the journal, but you can also use these strips to, um, to collage in your actual book that we're working on, but you can also print out more pages. So it's not like you won't have the images, but I'm going to put these down as a part my collaging and I think I'm just going to work in some strips and that way we're getting stuff done on the page when we come back and do some of the glazing or some of the other texture things you know you can you can <clears throat> um, collage on top but right now the focus is Getting our page 80% done. You know how we like to do that. So this is going to go down there. So let me start by getting my glue. And that way I'm going to show, you know, and you could do any of some of our earlier techniques. Because this can go back to the idea of, um, you know, our size and shape. So we, we just repeated, uh, repeated, this was amorphous shapes. These were these ones I cut out. These were triangles. This was like a stone pattern, circles, squares. I think I even did some strips in here somewhere. These were strips, see? So we're just gonna kind of go back to one of these and say, okay, that's a good thing. We're getting more pages done. I feel a sneeze coming on. Excuse me. So, um, you know, we're getting work done in our journal. These are basically our scraps, right? So let's put them in here. And it gives us something to come back to, to add more collage or whatever. So this is how, I, if I'm working on multiple projects, which I generally am, and I'm still like wanting to get my journaling ideas down, I do this. I'll use bits and scraps from other projects I'm working on and it gives you an idea also just to work out some of your ideas because it gives you another place to put things and sort of think about you know how some of your designs are coming together so 
Let's use this one. I like that one. So we'll do that. Let's just get rid of this. I'm just going to cut it. I could also rip these, but I'm just going to go with very straight, modular kinds of strips. I'm just going to put it straight on the book. Since I'm kind of trying to determine where I'm actually going to be putting, um, how much of this I'm trying to grab the color. So let's do it like that. And it's right down on there. Okay. And then let's see what else we have. Oh. That's looking good. I like that. Let's put that one down. Let me just get my... What about using this credit card? really does... You know, smooth everything out. And you can glaze even after you've put this down. Like when I start glazing, I probably will pick this book up and just lay it right on my jelly plate and glaze this page right in the book. So don't feel like. <clears throat> If you want to see some of these pages glaze and you, um, these papers glaze and you haven't done them before you cut your book down like I did, then just, um, you can, you know, you just put your book right down on the jelly plate. Okay, so one more. Let's see. What do we want? Want some contrast. Like maybe, oh, this is good. Something a little lighter. So, what I want to do is I kind of want this to have this a little bit of an irregular edge. I'm going to just rip a little bit off. So yeah, pull out your favorite poem or if something comes to you while you're working. A lot of times when I'm working, just lines will come to me. You know, just thoughts. And I generally will jot them down. And then that becomes some, you know, internal poetry that inspires me while I'm working. So just kind of be loose and sort of figure out what comes up for you. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay, perfect. So let's just go ahead and put this down. I really thought I cut, cut that white edge off, didn't I? Oh, no, this would have been... I really thought I cut that white edge off, didn't, didn't I? I have to look back at the video to see what I did. Because <laughs> I swear I did. When I look down here, it's back again. Unless I cut it off with something else and then didn't use it. No, I thought I did it on that one. Who knows? Okay, so here we go. Okay, I like that. So, you know, there's more that can be added to this, of course. This is just us saying, okay, boom. We got a page done. Because remember I told you the most important thing about art journaling and creating a consistent habit is not so much what you put in the journal is that you did put something in the journal. Because we're, we're you know, we're, we're exercising a muscle. It's just like going to the gym. We're working a muscle. And you just got to do it all the time regardless of what the situation is, what what's going on for the, you know, for the day, what projects you're working on, just figure out a way to bring that energy into your journal. And just the fact that we're going to put something down on these pages for the week as we work in our book, 
And I actually think sometimes when I'm working on projects, it's even easier to keep a journal because I'm already working with stuff and I'm already kind of, you know, um, working through a lot of different ideas. So I feel like I have a little bit more to kind of pull from. So let's see if that's the case for you all this week. Let's see if you find it easier to maybe work on this project and work in your journal. Um, or if you found a little more challenging and it's okay if it's a little more challenging that's that's another muscle it's like when you go to the gym we don't walk through the door knowing how to do the stair stepper and lift weights and crunches and hold planks for three minutes and all that you got to work up to it so so I'll continue with something like this probably but when I go to do some jelly printing I know I'll probably have some extra papers that I'll put in here so I don't know what I'm going to do but it will get done and then I know that I'm going to jelly print on these just do that glazing um that's it and then it'll be ready to continue to um build up now remember when you do the glazing like I said just put in for my, the video if I can find one of them I will put it below but if you just search it um, glazing you should be able to find that technique um, but it's just a really thin thin coat so it won't be thick so it won't make your pages stick together and everything gets sticky it just will be a really thin coat that will um, just give a little extra something to our books all right I think that's everything Wow that's pretty good for an hour, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I'm looking around. I think that's everything. So get your covers, figure out your size, work on your pages, start pulling all your little goodies together that you know you're going to want to use inside of the book, and especially some of these texture pieces that we did the other day is just too cool. And then have at doing some stuff in your journal. And I think that'll keep you busy until I see everyone next week. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to thumb it up. That always helps others to be able to see what we're doing over here and expand our community. If it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get all the notifications. And I think that's everything. So until next week, love you guys. Take care and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.